Okay, so here's a lesson for section 2.5, linear versus nonlinear relationships. So in the last section, um, we looked at how to make a scatter plot, and we made a bunch of scatter plots for pairs of variables that all made linear relationships. And we learned how to describe those linear relationships, and we also learned how to draw a line of best fit that um, helped us describe the relationship and also helped us make estimations called interpolations and extrapolations. In this section, I just want to show you that um, all pairs of variables don't form linear relationships, okay? They could form a nonlinear relationship. So let's take a look at what that looks like right here in this first example. So I have a scatter plot um, of this table of values here, okay? So I've got my table of values, and all 10 of these points have been plotted on the grid below here. Just a reminder about the graph of a scatter plot, um, the horizontal axis is the x-axis, which is the independent variable, and the vertical axis is the y-axis, okay, which is the dependent variable. So vertical is the y, which is the dependent variable. Horizontal is x, which is the independent variable. Okay, so let's just look at what it says down here. It says that Gandalf predicts that when x is 11, y will be 11. So this guy Gandalf, he predicts that when x is 11, he thinks that y will be 11. So he thinks that, here it is, y will be 11 if x is 11. That's his prediction right there. Okay. This other guy, Merlin, he predicts that when x is 11, y will be 15. Oh, it's a different color for him. So he thinks the next point on the graph would be right there. So our job is to try and decide which one of these guys um, is correct in their prediction. Okay. So if we remember from last section, um, on a scatter plot, we can draw a line of best fit. And if you remember um, how to draw a line of best fit, the properties of a line of best fit say that it should go through as many of the points as possible, okay? And it should have an even number of points on either side of the line, if possible. So let's try and draw. Let's try and draw a line that fits those properties. Let's try and draw a line that goes through as many of these points as possible and has an even number on either side. So you know, that's that's pretty close, okay? And you'll notice that it, it goes through that prediction that Gandalf made, um, saying that when x is 11, y is 11. So if I use this line of best fit, okay, Gandalf's prediction is correct. But using logic, when you look at the, the trend of this data, the data isn't, isn't increasing at a constant rate, okay? It doesn't seem like it's a linear relationship. You'll notice um, as x is increasing, the y values start increasing by a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then they continue to increase by, um, by more each time. So it's actually increasing exponentially. So this is a nonlinear relationship. So even though Gandalf's prediction is on the line of best fit, I don't think the line of best fit um, represents this data at all. So in this case, what we can actually do is we can draw a curve of best fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a smooth curve that will go through as many of these points as possible, and it'll, it will hopefully evenly distribute the points on either side of the line as well. So if I draw a curve instead of um, a straight line, so it's a curve of best fit, it should be a smooth curve. Um, it shouldn't zigzag back and forth like I did a bit there by accident. It should be smooth, and it should go through as many points as possible. So if I have a, a curve of best fit, Look, it goes right through um, Merlin's prediction. And, and this seems to represent the data better because it's increasing exponentially. So um, when x is 11, y is 11 if I use this curve of best fit to make an extrapolation. Okay, so, so who is correct and why? Let's just write an answer below here. Okay? So I think that Merlin is correct. So Merlin is correct. Um, why? Because the data does not follow a linear trend. Linear trend. Okay. So because this data does not follow a linear trend, a line of best fit is not an accurate representation of the data. So we can't use it to make estimations. Um, what is more accurate in this case is a curve of best fit. 
okay, because the data is uh, is not the, the the relationship between the variables is nonlinear. Okay, so here we go. Many nonlinear relations can be modeled with what we just used, a curve of best fit. And a curve of best fit ha has similar rules to what a line of best fit has. Okay, so a curve of best fit should pass through or close to as many points as possible, just like a line of best fit should. And any points that are not on the curve should be distributed evenly above and below it, just like a line of best fit. Okay. So let's practice describing scatter plots as either linear or nonlinear and having a strong or weak correlation, and whether it's a positive or negative relationship. And also we'll practice drawing our lines or curves of best fit. So we're going to do that for each of the following here. So let's look at the first one. The first one, it seems to follow a linear relationship. Okay? As x is increasing, y is decreasing. So I'm going to draw a line of best fit for this. It's going to go through or as close to many of these points as possible, and they should be evenly distributed above and below the curve, or above and below the line, sorry. So there's my line of best fit for that. And how I would describe this relationship, I would use a few words for this. First of all, it's falling down to the right, so it's a negative relationship. Anything falling down to the right is negative. Um, all of the points are very close to that line, okay, so it's a, it's a pretty strong correlation, so I'll say it's strong. And we've already established that I use the line of best fit because it is a linear relationship. Okay, so it's, it's a strong negative linear relationship. Next one, B. So this one, it seems as x is increasing, the y, the y values are also increasing. So it does seem like there is a trend here. It is going um, up to the right. So I'll draw a line of best fit here. And how I would describe this relationship? Well, I used a line of best fit because I think it's a linear relationship. Um, the points are pretty spread out, though. They're not very close to the line, so I'm going to say it's got a weak correlation. And the line is going up to the right, so that's a positive relationship. Next one. So in this one, it seems like the points are kind of just scattered everywhere. You know, with a low value of x, I have a low value of y, but also with a high value of x, I have a low value of y. They're kind of just scattered everywhere. I'm going to say this one has no relationship. Okay? It's not a linear relationship. It's not a nonlinear relationship. It's just I don't even think there's any relationship um, between our x and y variables here. Keep in mind, you know, x is the horizontal axis, y is the vertical axis. Okay? So let's do the next one. This one here. This is the first one we have here. That it doesn't seem to follow a linear trend. It does. It seems to be nonlinear. It seems like a curve of best fit would be more appropriate for this data. It seems like as x is increasing, y starts to increase a bit, and then it starts to decrease. So I'm going to try and draw a smooth curve through or as close to as many of these points as possible, and evenly distributing the points on either side of it. Okay. So I've drawn a nice smooth curve here. Keep in mind, this, this isn't a connecting the dots exercise, so I, you can't draw a line that goes like this. You can't just go, mm, you can't do that, okay? That's what people tend to want to do. You can't do that. It has to be a smooth curve, like the one I drew the first time. Smooth curve, okay? So how I would describe this one? I'm going to describe this one as a nonlinear relationship. Okay, and it's got a pretty strong correlation, so I could add that if I wanted to. It's a strong nonlinear relation. This one here, once again, these are kind of just scattered everywhere. There doesn't seem to be any trend, trend so I'm going to say no relationship. The next one, well, this one looks like a very strong positive relationship, um, and it seems to seems to be a linear relationship. As x is increasing, y is increasing at a constant rate. Uh, I'm going to draw a line of best fit for this one. You'll be able to see it easier. I'm going to draw my line of best fit, fit through as many of the points as possible. And this is a, all the points are really close to that line of best fit. So it, it's a strong 
positive, it's positive because it's going up to the right. Linear relationship. Next one. Uh, I could see you making an argument for this to have no relationship, but it, it does seem like as x is increasing, the y values are decreasing. Okay? So it does seem like there is a little bit of a relationship between these two variables. Um, it looks like it's a weak relationship, but there, it does seem to be a relationship. Okay? So I'm going to say this has a, a weak negative. Negative because it's falling down to the right. Weak, negative, linear relationship. Next one. This one definitely seems to be a nonlinear relationship. Um, as x is increasing, y goes up, then down, then up and down again. So let's try and draw a curve through these points as well, okay? So this curve is going to oscillate back and up and down. Let's see if I can get one through as many of these points as possible. Smooth curve. Maybe my curve bust. And if this trend would continue, my curve would keep going in the same pattern if I had a big graph, okay? So this is definitely a nonlinear relationship. Okay. Next one, this one here, once again, as x is increasing, y decreases for a while, and then at about the midway point, it then starts to increase again. So this is a nonlinear relationship, and I'll draw my curve a best fit. You always draw a curve when it's a nonlinear relation. I could probably do better, but that's pretty close, so that's a nonlinear relation as well. All right, let's move on now. Let's actually make some graphs ourselves. So let's test the hypothesis. The older you are, the more money you earn. So I've got my table of values. What I want to do is graph this table of values. <coughs> so what I'm going to do, I've got my graph ready here. I've got, remember in the table of values, um, the column on the left is your independent variable. You use x for that. And the, table, and the column on the right is your dependent variable. We use y for that. Earnings depends on age. Earnings is the dependent variable. So we'll plot earnings. I've already done this for us. Earnings is on the y-axis, the vertical axis. Age is on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. And I've already made my scale. Um, I should put my break in here. I've already made my scale to, to fit all of the data. So what we can do is actually plot these points. And let's test the hypothesis that as age increases, you earn more money. Okay, so let's plot that so we can visually see if this trend is true. So we plot the point at age 25, you're in 22,000. Let's plot that. So at age 25, you're in 22,000. So here's that point there. The next one would be at age 30, you're in 26.5, so or 26,500. So age 30, 26,500. 26,000. 500 right there. And if I plot all of the points, you know, keep going back, looking the data, plotting the point, this is what my points should look like. Okay? So these are all of the data points plotted. Remember, the hypothesis said the older you are, the more money you earn. Well, let's look at this graph. That does seem to be true for a while. It's as we get older, you start you earn more and more money until a certain point, and then it seems like the data starts to go down again. Okay? So um, with this data, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be a linear relationship because as x increases, y increases, but then it decreases. So I don't want to draw a line of best fit for this because it's, it's not a linear relation. It seems to be a non-linear relation because it curves like this. So I'm going to draw a curve of best fit. And if I draw a curve of best fit through as many of these points as possible, draw a nice smooth curve, evenly distributing the points above and below the curve, and it should look something like this. Okay. Um, now let's answer some questions about this. Okay, so we drew, we already drew the curve of best fit. Okay, we already drew that because it's a nonlinear relation. You draw a curve when it's nonlinear. If it was a linear relation, I would have drawn a line of best fit. Okay, so we've drawn our curve of best fit already. Let's describe the relationship. So we know it's going to be. We're going to describe it as nonlinear because we drew a curve of best fit. What else we can say? Um, it seems as though the earnings increase up 
up until age, let's take a look at our graph, seems like the increase up until about age, you know, up, up until about age 65, around that area, and then they start to tail back down. So up until about age, between somewhere between 60 and 65, um, I'll just say 65, okay, then earnings, then, then the earnings start to decrease, so then they decrease. So does the data support the hypothesis? Um, no. In fact, it doesn't. The hypothesis, all the hypothesis said was that, um, let's go back and look at it, um, the older you are, the more money you earn. And if we look at the graph, at a certain point, the older you are, the less money you start to earn. So no, it doesn't support the hypothesis. No, um, I'll be more specific, no, after the age of 65. you earn less money. Okay, now let's try and explain why the data for ages over 69 do not correspond with the hypothesis. Well, probably the simplest explanation would be um, around 65, that's when people tend to retire, right? And so if they're not working anymore, um, you're not going to be making as much money just by collecting your pension. So. Um, I'll just write a little one-word answer down here, uh, just retirement. That would be my explanation um, for why uh, the data doesn't support the hypothesis uh, for ages over 65. Okay, let's do another example. So a skydiver jumps from an airplane, the distance fallen and time taken are recorded in the table. So I've got my table of values, I've got my column on the left, which I know is my independent variable, I use x. Column on the right is my dependent variable, I use y. So um, it shows the data, so this is the time after he's jumped from the airplane in seconds, and this is the distance the person has fallen. So first thing we would want to do is we want to graph that data on our table here, and I, I already have the scale done here. I know on the x-axis is my independent variable, so time, time is always independent, so I would label that time in seconds, and on the right, um, that's distance fallen. So uh, distance and it's in meters. Okay, so I've labeled my graph. Then next thing I want to do, I want to start plotting these points. So um, obviously, when he like before he's even jumped, he hasn't fallen any. So first point is just at the origin there, zero zero. After he's been falling for one second, he's fallen five meters. So you know roughly about here. Uh, after two seconds, he's fallen 19 meters. And then if I continue plotting these points, my graph should look something like this. Okay. Um, next thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to look at this data. I want to decide, does this look like a linear relation? Is it increasing at a constant rate? Or is it increasing exponentially? Okay. And in, in, in this case, it looks like a nonlinear relation to me. Um, I think it's increasing exponentially. Okay. As x increases, Y is increasing, but at an accelerated rate. Okay. So what I would do for a nonlinear relationship, I would draw a curve of best fit. And if I draw my curve of best fit for this, it should look something like this. Okay? That would be my curve of best fit. And that seems to represent the data pretty well. It represents the data better than if I drew a line of best fit. If I thought this was a linear relation, I would have to draw a line of best fit. And a line of best fit would look, I don't know, something like this. And that does not seem to represent the data nearly as well as the curve of best fit does. So this is clearly a nonlinear relation. So let's classify the relation as linear or nonlinear. So we've already established that we're going to classify this as a nonlinear relationship. So let's write that, nonlinear. Um, and then let's explain it. So as time increases, The rate of distance fallen is increasing. So he's not falling at a constant rate. 
Okay, as time is increasing, his rate of falling is increasing, and that and that's due to the acceleration of gravity. Okay, so this causes the data to form a curve. How far will the will the skydiver have fallen after um, in 3.5 seconds? Well, let's quickly look at our graph here. At 3.5 seconds, he's fallen about 60 meters. So that's an interpolate inter interpolation. Sorry, um, because it's data within. It's an estimation within our data set between two values. So that's an interpolation. If I asked you how far he'll have fallen after six seconds, I would go all the way up here, and it would probably be you know, somewhere up there. So that would be an extrapolation because it would be beyond, it would be beyond our set of data. Um, so if you have any questions, um, make sure to ask. And you can get the worksheet for this section from jensenmath.ca.